welcome back. The New York Restoration Project is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to transforming open space and under-resourced communities to get a, green, a greener, more sustainable New York City. Now, joining us to share more details, we are pleased to have the Senior Director of Engagement and Programming at the New York Restoration Project, Yolanda Rodriguez. And Yolanda, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Darren, and thanks to everyone in the Bronx, and hello to everyone in the Bronx. Uh, we have 13 community gardens in the Bronx, and hopefully we'll be talking about that a little later. Absolutely, but I want to get into uh, a little bit about the project. So give us a little background into uh, the history of this project. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, I'm Yolanda Rodriguez, Senior Director of Engagement and Programming, and I lead a team of a wonderful group of people who do engagement that is engaging people from the community into the gardens to do this fabulous programming in the gardens. As you mentioned earlier, Darren, uh, is an environmental justice not-for-profit and a, a citywide nature conservancy that preserves community gardens and other green spaces throughout the five boroughs. Um, today, we oversee more than 80 acres of parkland and 52 community gardens. And I mentioned there are 13 right here in the Bronx uh, through the five boroughs. And through our Gardens for the City programs, we create and build new green spaces for underserved communities throughout the city. So when we talk about green spaces and somebody's just you know, joining us and may not understand the importance of why it is necessary to have green spaces, uh, from your perspective, give us what green spaces does for the city, the state, and, uh, you know, just also the climate. Well, as you can probably surmise, green spaces are, are, are vital and critical to our communities, particularly in underserved communities where we see the lack of green spaces, meaning the lack of trees, the lack of uh, gardens, community gardens, uh, that can lead to other challenges in these underserved communities. So it's critical not only for the well-being of the planet, but the people who inhabit them to have access to these green spaces, which was of critical importance to the New York Restoration Project to be able to ensure that this accessibility is for all New Yorkers. Yeah, and when we talk about accessibility for all New Yorkers, we know that the Bronx has a tremendous amount of green space, more parks than any of the New York City boroughs. Uh, and we're excited about that. We're, we're glad about that. Uh, but the accessibility, talk to us about uh, how you're working in the Bronx, what's happening in the Bronx with some of these spaces. Yeah, absolutely. Like I mentioned earlier, we have 13 community gardens right now in the Bronx. And I'll tell you the areas right now. We have one in Williamsbridge, Tremont, Melrose, Claremont, East Tremont, Fordham, Eastchester, Castle Hill, Hunts Point, Morrisania, High Bridge, and on Willis Avenue. And then as part of, those are the community gardens. And then as part of our Gardens for the City program, we create and build new green spaces, whether it's a, a, a public school that has a, a vacant area in front of their school that would like to be transformed into, into a garden, whether it's a NYCHA development that has some space in their yard that might need some sprucing up, or might actually be a garden as well. So we work with community partners under this particular program, the Gardens for the City program, to do just that, to create those green spaces for these communities. And as you create these green spaces, talk to us about the impact because um, there's an important uh, element of this, right? And as these green spaces are being created, uh, it benefits the community and it also you know, benefits the environment. Absolutely. Um, you know, as I said, it makes it when you create a space for for uh, a, a community or a collective of people who maybe never even had access to a park or to a garden or to even like a shaded area where they can just sit and talk to their neighbors. Um, the impact is is on many levels. Not only can you find some sort of a refuge in these green spaces, you can find shading that might not be available in urban heat areas in the city. You might be able to grow food in a garden uh, that addresses some of the social, the food insecurities that we're seeing more and more in the city, uh, especially in areas where there are food deserts, where the closest supermarket to where you live is like five miles away. Um, also with programming, 
when we bring in programming to these spaces, you get a chance to maybe see a movie. We have movie nights. You get a chance to exercise. Not only are you gardening, but also we have a, a series of classes during the season. By the way, the season runs from April 1 through October 31st. Uh, we have fitness classes, yoga classes, we have cooking demonstrations. So it's a wonderful way to not only seek refuge from the heat of the city, um, but also to involve yourself with your neighbors and your community in, the, in those ways that I described. And so for us here in the borough of the Bronx, we're excited because we do have these great spaces and an opportunity to be able to uh, cultivate and really take things to another level. The work that you do, requires not just yourself, but you get a, a cadre of people who are working with you. I know that you're armed with volunteers. Um, talk to us about the volunteer pool, how they've been able to help to assist in the work that you do. And also, are you looking for some volunteers? Absolutely. Um, I just want to uh, tell you what our, uh, uh, the, our website's address, nyrp.org, there, and find out how you can become a volunteer. You can volunteer at one of our two parks that we steward and we look after. Uh, which is the uh, Sherman Creek Park and the High Bridge Park, or you can volunteer in our community gardens. Or like I said, um, I mentioned the gardens that in the, in the areas of the Bronx, you can just walk into a garden and say, listen, I just noticed that this garden is in my neighborhood. I'd like to uh, volunteer, help clean up, or maybe even become a member. So I would encourage everyone who's listening to go to our website, myrp.org, or you can call um, 212 333-2552 and ask how you can volunteer or become a member. Yeah, and um, the impact. Obviously the community has seen a lot of uh, great impact by the work that you've done. Talk to me about what do you feel has been the greatest impact that you've made on the community uh, since uh, this restoration project has begun? Well, you know, the Re New York Restoration Project was founded by Bette Midler. Um, everyone knows about her as just a phenomenal artist, but she's also a phenomenal activist and has been working for decades uh, on behalf of mar mar marginalized and underserved communities throughout New York City for many, many, many years. And this grew organically in 1995 when she and a group of her friends decided to remove the trash that they saw at the uh, Fort Tyron and Fort Washington parks. In, the, in northern Manhattan, and that evolved into what it is now, the New York Restoration Project. So um, she knew then, as she knows now, as we know now, that having green spaces it, it makes a huge impact in the lives of people um, that are, are, didn't have those spaces before. Um, you know, we talked about a little bit about food insecurity. Some of our gardens grow food that they actually serve to the community in pantries, that they leave in pantries. Um, and another uh, partner that we have is the Little Free Libraries. Uh, we, we know that there's a literacy problem in a lot of underserved communities uh, with the lack of bookstores in these communities and, and with public libraries shutting down wherever we turn. So the Little Free Libraries is one of our partners where we bring books to the gardens and it's been a huge success. Um, the, the books disappear instantly. So we keep replenishing books at the Little Free Libraries that are installed in our community gardens. So I, I, Darren, I can't tell, talk to you enough about the importance of not only helping to preserve the planet through these endeavors, but also to make sure that um, underserved communities have access to these spaces. And for you, before we go, I want to talk about COVID because that's been a huge impact on so many people. How have you made the, the transition through COVID to be able to still maintain these green spaces and do what you do? Well, you know, during COVID, especially during the lockdown, um, folks found themselves inside a lot. So where do you go? You go outside. So the gardens were kept open. And we were able to provide robust programming, even through the lockdown period up until today, where we still have, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, events going on in the gardens, activities going on in the garden, fitness classes, et cetera, movie nights, et cetera. So it, although we're still sort of waging through this uh, pandemic, we're keeping, we still keep the gardens open. You know, it's a place where people can, you know, like a public park can come and safely um, enjoy the green spaces that they have in their gardens. 
So I want to thank you so much for taking the time, Yolanda, with us for the New York Restoration Project. I think it's been uh, very impactful to know the work of green space that's happening in our community and right here in the borough of the Bronx with so many spaces. Uh, thanks much. Thank you, Darren. Thank you so much for all your advocacy for green spaces and for supporting NYRP. Thank you. Yes, well, we do support it. We want to let you know if you want more information. As Yolanda said, please visit the website nyrp.org and then follow them on Instagram and Twitter at nyrp. We are taking a quick break. We do have more show. Don't go anywhere. Open continues right after this.